Hello and welcome to Prism Business War Games overview of key metrics and ratios for vehicle and equipment dealerships. And in this video, we're going to review some common metrics that vehicle and equipment dealers use to gain insights into the effectiveness of their business and the strengths, weaknesses, and improvement opportunities in performance. To start, a financial ratio relates two numbers to each other, sometimes drawing from more than one financial statement. And the goal is to highlight the relationship between the numbers so that an insight into the business can be generated. And it's important if you're going to use metrics that you know what specific numbers are being used. If you see a metric or if someone provides you with one, they might have calculated the metric very differently than you would. They might have included or not included some details. So be careful of differences in calculation. But typically, there are common ways that these metrics are calculated as a general rule, and they're industry standards. Also, be careful of comparing ratios across industries where they might make more or less sense. And be careful about reading too much into a single metric. You really need to understand how that metric compares to the industry or to the past performance of the company and how it's related to the current strategic condition of the company as well. Overall, there are categories that financial ratios will fall into, and we have some on the right side of the screen. Sales ratios, inventory, service ratios, liquidity and profitability, and we'll talk about some of these in this video. Here's some key ratios and metrics that are used at equipment and vehicle dealerships and we'll cover several of these in this video and to put this into context the dealership model of business has been benchmarked very extensively and that's led to many best practices and operations many people have studied these best practices and identified some of the key performance indicators or kpis that can give you insight into the business so you can compare yourself to other companies in the industry, and if you're not matching up, then you can analyze how to do things better. In fact, if you have an opportunity to join a group of similar companies to compare metrics and best practices, this can be very valuable. So what we have in this diagram at the top is a value chain representing how value might be created at a vehicle or equipment dealership what stages of the business a customer might go through or that value comes out of at the business level. And hopefully at the end of this value chain, profit is created. And beyond what we're showing you here, there are probably other areas of the business that support uh, the business as well that you might want to measure the effectiveness of, uh, such as training, advertising, rentals, etc. So ratio analysis can indicate the effectiveness of the various parts of the business. And you see on this uh, diagram, we're showing you sales, inventory, finance, and insurance service, and overall profitability. And you can see in the middle of the diagram, several of the metrics uh, that we'll talk about in this video, gross margin, inventory turns, ROA, etc. At the bottom of the diagram, you can see some success factors and best practices that perhaps can help improve the performance of the business in the areas that are measured by the metrics. So if you'd like to, you can just pause the video here and review uh, this slide before we get into our discussion of these specific metrics. Okay, the first metric we'll talk about is a metric in the equipment or vehicle sales category, which is gross profit margin. As you can see on the slide, it's calculated as gross profit in dollars divided by net sales in dollars. And we've taken both numbers off of the income statement for this one. And net sales just means sales or revenue net of trade discounts that you might have offered, returns, bulk discounts, things like that. And here's why this metric is important. Gross profit is what's left over after you cover direct materials and direct labor costs, or COGS, which is cost of goods sold. That is what you paid for an item plus technician labor costs, etc. So the amount of money left over needs to be enough to cover any additional expenses after that, such as overheads, advertising. And if you don't have enough left over, you can run into problems 
uh, investing in growing your business, covering marketing and advertising, etc. As an example of how to interpret this ratio, a gross margin of say 20% means that for every dollar of sales, you have 20 cents left over after paying for direct materials and labor. And you need to use that 20 cents again to cover advertising, pay taxes, and hopefully still have something left over for profit. And just a note, when you see a gross margin number, remember that it doesn't show volume. You could have a 30% gross margin number, but you've only sold two units. The next metric is another measure in the vehicle and equipment sales category used to new. And it's simply calculated as a comparison of the number of used versus new units of equipment or vehicles that you're selling. And note that this isn't a percentage. It's a numeric ratio of used to new, not of used to total units, which would be calculated as used units uh, over total units. So doing the calculation as a ratio versus a percentage is an example of why you want to make sure that you're using the same definition and calculation. And a high used to new ratio isn't always better. It's not telling you anything about the profitability of used units. To get an understanding of that, you would need to look at profit per used unit sold. When you're analyzing inventory, you really have two conflicting goals. You don't want too much inventory on hand, but you also don't want too little. Here's a metric that helps you assess that inventory turns. It's very commonly used by companies that carry inventory. And it's telling you how many times a year your inventory investment is sold through. As you see on the slide, it's calculated as COGS divided by average inventory. And we're taking a number from the income statement, COGS, and also a number from the current assets section of the balance sheet. And a general number we hear is 3.5 times a year. That is, you're selling your inventory 3.5 times a year. So it's sitting in your inventory for about 3.4 months before it's sold. If you have inventory, the ratio is relevant because inventory can get old and outdated if you hold it too long. So you need to sell it off before it becomes a drag on your business. In addition, though, you need to make sure that you have enough inventory on hand to meet demand. You don't want to stock out, which can drive customers away. And here's an operating metric that focuses on the finance side of the business, finance and insurance department penetration. And the metric is pretty straightforward and indicates the percentage of units sold that are financed through the dealership. And it's simply calculated as finance contracts divided by total units sold. Here's why it's important. The F&I sales generated through the financing arm of the business can be an important source of profit for a dealership. And this metric provides a gauge as to how well you're capitalizing on the financing opportunities at the dealership versus customers going outside your dealership to get financing. And in the equipment industry, we sometimes hear 25 to 50% as a benchmark. That is 25% to 50% of the units you sell, you're also financing within your dealership. Let's talk about the service side of the business. The overall goal in the service department is to maximize billable hours of the department for the time available to work. That's called the proficiency measure. And we're looking at the service department in terms of hours that a technician spends in the three areas represented by the bar chart on the slide, uh, in which the bars show the available hours to work, the time actually spent, and then the hours that are billed to the customer. And the first hurdle is that you need to have your techs servicing equipment or vehicles as much as possible. That's the productivity measure. And the second hurdle is that you need your techs to do the job in the allotted time. That's the efficiency measure. Productivity indicates that the service technicians are servicing equipment or vehicles as much as possible. It's calculated as actual time spent divided by available time. 
and a rough benchmark is 80%, not 100%. You need some time for training, breaks, organizing, etc. And so how productive is the technician in our example using the bar charts? Well, you can see that the technician is at a 75% productivity level. And on the slide, we show you a few things you can look at to improve the metric. And the efficiency metric shows whether the service techs are doing service jobs in the time allotted. As you can see on the slide, it's calculated as time billed to customers divided by actual time spent. And the benchmark for efficiency is 100%. So how efficient is the technician in our example? Uh, and you can see that this technician is working at an 80% efficiency level. Overall proficiency is calculated as time billed to the customer divided by available time. And because proficiency is the product of productivity times efficiency, if you take care of both of those, proficiency takes care of itself. And in our example, the technician is at a 60% proficiency level. Let's talk about some company-wide metrics, starting with a liquidity ratio, the current ratio. And liquidity just means the ability of the firm to pay for its short-term obligations with short-term assets. And it's calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. And we're taking two numbers from the balance sheet in this case and comparing them. Current assets include cash, accounts receivable, and inventory as the big items. And current liabilities include accounts payable and short-term debt. Now a number that we hear as a benchmark is two to one or two dollars of current assets for every one dollar of current liabilities. And uh, just think, if you were an equipment or vehicle manufacturer, to think about this ratio, how would you feel about shipping a dealership that has a two-to-one current ratio some additional inventory? And how would you feel if instead their current ratio was a 0.75? Would that change the way that you feel about shipping them some inventory? So that's an example of a way that this ratio might be used return on sales. It's an indicator of the overall profit performance of the company. As you can see on the slide, it's calculated as net income before taxes divided by net sales. And note that we're using net income before taxes in this case. But you could also look at the ratio after taking out taxes. But it would be a different ratio. And at the bottom of the slide, the AED, which is the Associated Equipment Distributors, which is a trade association in the heavy equipment industry, has 3% as a benchmark for a heavy equipment distributor. And that's before both interest and taxes are taken out. And that means that you've got three cents left over in profit before interest and taxes for every dollar of sales as a way of looking at this metric. And here's another profit ratio, return on assets. And it shows you how the assets of the business are generating profit. It's calculated as net income before taxes divided by total assets. And the AED at the bottom of the screen has 5.4% as a benchmark number for a heavy equipment distributor, which means that you're generating 5.4 cents in net income before taxes for every dollar of total assets that you've got. Another profit ratio, return on equity. And this shows how the capital contributed by shareholders and also capital that is retained in the business is generating profit. It's calculated as net income before taxes divided by total equity. And the AED has about 20% as a benchmark for a heavy equipment distributor. That is, you're generating 20 cents of profit before taxes for every dollar of total equity that the owners of the company have invested in the business. Here's an activity ratio, asset turnover. 
and it indicates how you're working the assets of the business to generate sales. And it also gives you a sense for the asset intensity of the business. It's calculated as net sales divided by total assets. And the AED's benchmark at the bottom of the screen is about 1.8 for a heavy equipment distributor, which means you're generating $1.8 of sales for every dollar of assets that you've got. This is a solvency ratio, the leverage ratio. And solvency means how well the company can meet its long-term obligations and how well it can expand and grow into the future. And leverage just means the relative amount of debt used to finance the firm's assets versus equity uh, or shareholders' investment. And it's calculated as total assets divided by total equity. And it seems counterintuitive since debt is not actually in the formula. But the ratio will tell us total liabilities because it relies on the structure of the balance sheet in which assets equal liabilities plus equity. So if you have a leverage value of 10, that means you have $10 of assets for every $1 of equity, which using the structure of the balance sheet means you've got $9 in liabilities. And if you had a leverage of four, it means that you have $4 of assets to every $1 of equity, and that means you must have $3 of liabilities. Now the AED has 3.8 as a benchmark for a heavy equipment distributor, and that's $3.8 of assets to every $1 of shareholders equity, which means you've got about $2.8 of debt as financing. And to complete our discussion of ratios, let's come back to ROE, return on equity. An argument is sometimes made that ROE is important, but as an operating manager at a business, it's really out of my control. It's a finance department function. But a counter argument was made, and it became known as the strategic profit model, or the DuPont model, because DuPont used it extensively that made the opposite argument, that in fact, operating managers can have a direct impact on ROE. And that if managers focus on three other metrics, ROE will essentially take care of itself. So if managers focus on ROS, asset turnover, and leverage, the elements of ROE will be maximized. So take a look at what happens when you multiply through those three ratios. You're left with ROE. Okay, that's a quick overview of some key ratios and metrics used at equipment and vehicle dealerships. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to take the next step and really bring these numbers alive, contact PRISM to find out more about our test drive dealership business simulation and feel free to contact us through the email address here. And you can visit our website to watch videos of past courses that PRISM has run. Here's the link. Thanks again.